Hi everybody, uh, my name is David Allen and I'm an architect with Neo4j. Today's video is going to be about how you can get a quick start to launch Neo4j Enterprise on Azure Cloud. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I have um, my Azure console and to get started we're going to go to the Azure Marketplace right here on the tab. And I'm going to search for Neo4j Enterprise. VM version 4.2. So this is the particular entry that we want to use. You'll notice that there are a bunch of other entries about Neo4j in the Azure Marketplace, but we want to focus on the ones that say VM because in today's tutorial, we're going to be taking you through how to set up um, self-managed virtual machines for, for Neo4j. So let's go ahead and click on this particular offer. Now this is a pretty standard um, Azure Marketplace type of experience. You can uh, click on the heart at the upper right hand to favorite this and to you know be able to return to it easily. You can check out plans and pricing and alternatives, usage information and support and so forth. But we're going to go ahead and click on create here. So now we've got this form to fill out that allows us to shape the instance that we want to create in Azure Cloud. I've got this underneath of one of my subscriptions and I'm going to create a new resource and I'm going to call this Azure Launch Demo as a resource group. Um, it's a good practice to put everything into a new resource group because this allows us to do um, resource segregation and isolation. And when we're done at the very end of this demo, we're going to be able to dispose of everything that we set up with by simply deleting the resource group when we put everything into its own resource group. I'm going to call the virtual machine MyGraph. Uh, let's call it, yeah, let's call it MyGraph. And instead of West Europe, well, I am in the East Coast of the United States, so I'm going to put that in East US. Um, we're going to be running this particular image right here. I'm going to skip the spot instances for right now and just go with the standard size VM. If you drop down the VM dialog, you'll see that there are a lot of different sizes that are available as well as some recommended sizes from us. Um, but I'm just going to take the defaults here for this particular demonstration. Now, after we launch this, what we're going to be getting is a Linux-based VM that runs Ubuntu. And I'm going to want to log into that via SSH to do administration. So I will let Azure uh, generate a new SSH key for this. And we will log into the VM as Azure user. So let's go ahead and click Review and Create. All right, now our final validation has passed and we are ready to create this thing. So click the Create button. And the next thing that's going to happen is Azure is going to prompt us to download our private key and create the resource. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, one of the little gotchas that I've noticed here is that when you first download that, um, that private key file, mygraphkey.pem, you're going to need to make sure that it has the right SSH permissions on it. So what I'm going to do is chmod0600 downloads mygraphkey... Uh, that's the file that I want. And I'm going to move that file to be like uh, downloads my graph key. And I'm going to call that downloads Azure VM dot pen. Now I can see in that particular download file that my permissions are set correctly, which means that when I want to SSH into the VM later, that's going to work. If the permissions on your key are not properly set, then the SSH um, command will fail. So now we can see in the background that our deployment is in process. And I'm going to pause right here and we're going to time warp forward in a second when that deployment is done. Okay, so our deployment is complete and we're ready to start using Neo4j. Let's go ahead and click on Go to Resource here. This pulls up uh, the particular virtual machine that we just created. Now, I'm going to first show you how to log into the web interface and then we're going to talk about SSH login and administration and how you might deal with the machine over time as you're using it. Now that our virtual machine is set up, we're going to grab the uh, public IP address over here by clicking the little copy button and we're going to open up a new browser window and we're going to go to that IP address port 7473 making sure that we're using HTTPS here. This is going to take us to Neo4j browser which is the command shell for Neo4j. 
Now you might get one of these, your connection is not private warning messages. This is because we are using a self-signed SSL certificate. You can just hit advanced and then continue to the site and simply accept trust for that certificate. At a later point, we could, for example, set up a proper certificate and make sure that that warning isn't in place. But for now, what we're going to do is come here to browser and log in with Neo4j, username, password, Neo4j, and then hit connect. Neo4j will prompt us to reset our password with something different. So I'm going to enter in a new simple password right here just to get started. And when we now connect to the shell, we're all the way into the database and ready to start using it with our new username and password. Now I'm going to create some really simple data here. Let's just say create person name David knows person name Michael. This is a simple example of the Cypher query language. Cypher is akin to SQL for graphs. And so what I'm doing here is creating two nodes, one labeled person with the attribute name equals David and the other one uh, labeled person with the attribute name equals Michael and then a nose relationship between them and you'll notice that this is this almost looks like ASCII art what we're really drawing is nodes in rounded brackets and an arrow indicating a relationship going between the two relationships let's go ahead and hit enter there and it's for the first time going to contact the database and run that query and add the data now we can just say match n return n and take a look at our little graph that we just created inside of Neo4j. So now we know that that's working all the way up. And so from here, sky is the limit. You can use any of the standard Neo4j tooling together. Before we get into that, uh, let's take a look at the SSH side of the house so that you can log into, monitor, and administer this machine. So again, we're going to need that public IP address. And I've got a little shell open here. If you remember, we changed the permissions on our SSH key. So now I'm going to type SSH-I downloads Azure VM.pem and it's Azure user at public IP and that's going to get us in by SSH. It'll prompt you to accept the key for the first time. We're going to go ahead and hit yes there and so now we're in. So this is a general um, uh, Ubuntu Linux um, instance. And we can verify that the service is running by hitting system CTL status Neo4j. And we can actually see right there that the, the system status is started right there. Now, if you ever want documentation on how the virtual machine on Azure works, there is Neo4j virtual machines. There is um, uh, documentation on our website about exactly how those work and how to configure them and how they work together with the cloud environment. Like for example, you can use Azure tags on a VM to configure the VM from the outside and it'll tell you how to start and stop the uh, system service and so on. I'll drop a link to this particular page um, in the description for the video. So again, now that we have this particular virtual machine, we can also connect it to some of Neo4j's other tooling. Here I've got um, Neo4j desktop up and I've created a project that I've called Azure. So what I'm going to do is add a remote connection and I'm going to grab that IP address and back in Neo4j desktop I'm going to call this the Azure launched VM from marketplace and in my connection URL I'm going to put in the IP address that we know and then click next and put in username Neo4j, password is the one that I used. I'm gonna click encrypt, use encrypted connection and click save. So now we've got this virtual machine listed in Neo4j desktop and we can click the connect button. Now you'll see that we're connected to that remote VM and we can use any of the tools that come with Neo4j desktop, any of the graph apps or anything else that's in our ecosystem together with this particular virtual machine that we created in the cloud. So for example, rather than using a web browser to get there, you can open Neo4j browser in this way. Here we've got Neo4j browser running through desktop connected to our 
um, a secure VM in Azure Cloud. Whenever we're not using that connection, we can, of course, disconnect it from Neo4j desktop and return at a later point. Now, because it's just a virtual machine in Azure, at the end of the day, you can use all of Azure's controls as you normally would. Um, and all of this, of course, we have isolated within a resource group we created called the Azure Launch Demo. Um, so when we're, when we're finished with this deployment and we no longer need it, probably the easiest way to deal with it is to delete the entire resource group that we created specifically for that purpose. And we will wipe away all of those resources and get back to the, the normal state. Within that resource group, of course, you can see everything that was deployed to make that work, including the network security group stuff um, and the network interface, so that, for example, a common requirement for customers would be to tweak the network security group rules so that um, ingress is only permitted on particular IP ranges. So via the Azure Marketplace, we make it open to any source and any destination because we don't know ahead of time where a person is connecting from. But a very common requirement would be to launch a virtual machine like that and then to lock down that network security group ingress and egress to make sure that only authorized users have a network path to get there. So just to finish up our particular demo, though, I'm going to go back home and see that I've got this resource group called Azure Launch Demo. And I'm going to delete that resource group by uh, just typing the name of the Azure, the resource group name, and then clicking Delete. And once you get back to this, we have now gone completely full cycle from nothing to a deployed Neo4j database and back again in just a few easy steps. So I hope you found this you know, easy to follow and that you've gotten some value out of this. If you would like to contact me, you can reach me via Twitter or you can reach out to your Azure partner contact. I am mdavidallen on Twitter and I'd love to hear about what you're doing with this and see if you have any questions. Thanks for your time and attention.